Senator Giorgio. I rise to speak and put on the record as Senator Hanson is unwell, I am making the following contribution to the debate on her behalf. I would like to welcome to the Australian people the equivalent of a public flogging of an elected member in the Senate. Regardless of how many personal votes Fraser Anning may have received at the 2016 election, let me put it on record that he still drew a stronger vote than a number of you sitting in this chamber here today. Just ask Liberal Senator for Tasmania, Wendy Askew. Senator, you sit here today after receiving zero votes from your Tasmanian constituents. In fact, Senator Askew joins us today as a result of the nepotism that runs deep through the Liberal Party. I've got no doubt your brother will be, in, will be enjoying his plum job as Australia's Consul General in Chicago. Come to think of it, Fraser Anning polled a stronger number of votes than the Green Senator for New South Wales, Maureen Faruqi, received zero votes in the 2016 election from New South Wales constituents. You, Senator Faruqi, are regarded as a to token replacement for Senator Rhiannon. Not one of you received a single vote from the Australian public, but you line up in this chamber hungry for this public flogging of Senator Anning. Australians were horrified at the murder of 550 people in Christchurch on the 15th of March this year. And we were horrified to think that these murders were at the hands of an Australian. Many of us thought Australia had witnessed its last mass shooting after the Port Arthur massacre, which resulted in John Howard rightfully introducing a ban on semi-automatic weapons throughout this country in 1996. But here, we are 23 years later, having to witness 50 innocent lives taken at the hands of a crazed lone gunman. Hate, extremism and violence has no place in our democratic, civilised nations. And I use this opportunity to reinstate one nation's commitment to a peaceful rule of law for all, in accordance with our democratic constitution and acts of parliament. But while Senator Anning's comments following the mass killings in New Zealand were untimely and therefore deemed highly insensitive, he still maintains a right to his opinion. If One Nation endorses your actions to censor Senator Anning today, our freedom of speech as elected members of this chamber will be removed. Who will be the next member of parliament stopped from speaking their thoughts or their thoughts of the people they represent? We refuse to be led like sheep in this chamber and therefore we abstain from voting on the essential motion. Same. Our vote will not contribute to the demise of freedom of speech or, not, or nor will it endorse the timing or tone of the comments made by Senator Annie. The exploitation of these murdered in New Zealand is offensive and each one of you should be ashamed on the manipulation of the events that day to suit your own agenda. The people of Queensland will judge Senator Anning at the ballot box, not us. Since the tra tragic event in New Zealand on March 15, 65 additional terrorist attacks have been recorded across the globe. That's 418 people died as a result of terrorism over the last 18 days. Is this the future politicians in this chamber want for the people of Australia? With more than 600,000 people coming into this country every year for work, permanent residency and education purposes, we have left ourselves vulnerable to the same carnage that is on display in other parts of the world. Only days ago, Prime Minister Scott Morrison made the announcement that this government would give another $570 million in extra funding to Australia's counter-terrorism and counter-intelligence operations. This is an admission that Scott Morrison's government has failed to keep terrorists out of Australia. And let's not forget who opened the floodgates to the influx of these people coming to the country in the first place, the Labor Party. How many radical Islamic hate preachers have been allowed into Australia over the past decade and yet complete silence from Labor and the Greens on the vile language that spews out of their mouths while they indoctrinate and, ra and radicalise vulnerable Australians? No, your political witch hunt in these dare question the immigration policy of this nation. The slightest whiff of protectionism in this country by the elites in this chamber and it sends you into a psychological frenzy. Governments and elected members 
They have three primary objectives. Adhere to the Constitution, manage the economic stability of rule and law in our country, and lastly, stop telling people how to run their lives and businesses. Instead of getting on the crafting of robust economic narrative for Australia by drought-proofing our nation with visionary projects like the hybrid version of the Bradfield scheme or establishing ways to bring back manufacturing or cutting power prices with the construction of new coal fire plants, they're all here beating your chests. We've treated the people of this country with the same disband and unworthiness that trust upon me and others who dare speak up to the forgotten voices of the nation. The Australian people have been treated like mushrooms, fed complete BS and kept in the dark. That is where One Nation steps in. We see the anguish, hurt and pain on their faces of ordinary Australians. We take the time to listen to the troubles and what they have to say. The people of Australia have watched you sell your souls and this country out so you can hold your seats in this chamber. What do you say to the generational farmers who have been forced off the land due to the pittance they are being paid for their produce and lack of water which governments have failed to provide? Your actions speak louder than words because you have continued flogging our prime agricultural land off to the highest bidder overseas. It is not foreign investment, it is called foreign takeover. What do you say to the homeless who have once had no visual presence in our streets? Today, more than 100,000 Australians are homeless, yet you bellow from the rafters when we dare to call to redivert the $4.2 billion in foreign aid into helping our own people. You have left the support of our returned defence personnel to the will of God, instead of assisting them to address the mental and physical scars that our wars have caused them. What do you say to the aged pensioners who are stumbling around in the dark, too afraid to use electricity because they are struggling to make ends meet, without even turning on their air conditioning and heaters because they are too scared? Every day, today's central motion has nothing to do than a public flogging, and One Nation won't be part of it. Thank you. Um, I'll go to Senator